Hello everyone, welcome back to our home. In this video, we are going to focus on redesigning all the spaces in the cabin and basically putting all our dreams onto a model. Yeah. Do you call it a model? A 3D model. model. Yeah. The reason we want to start doing this now, even though we won't be able to make those dreams a reality until at least the Two new year. Time, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Two years now. One year, one year. <laughs> no. One year's time. <laughs> the reason we want to do this right now is because every time we're feeling down, disappointed, sad with the world, struggling, which we have felt a lot the last weeks, to be honest. The thing that gets us excited is dreaming about what we're going to do. We start looking at furniture and layouts and that kind of gets us going. It just feels like we're going somewhere and we feel less helpless and stuck. So today, what we're going to start with is measuring the whole cabana yeah. so that we have proper dimensions to put our plans on right because we already have talked about a lot of our ideas but then the reality is that we don't know exactly where things will fit and we need to do that and then because Warner is an architect he will take all the measurements we oh, we do it together okay but I don't know how to manage the program so you will okay. take the, the measurements oh I take and, the measurements and put them in the program That's yeah what and then we'll be able to play around and really yeah. make that more concrete I think what we can do for this video is to show the ideas we have of reconfiguring the layout so yeah hope you're as excited as we are maybe perhaps this this helps you also think of your space and how you can reconfigure it what is possible what is not and here we're very lucky about moving spaces around because even though the stone walls are completely unmovable like there's nothing Fixed. we can do about yeah. that yeah like the door is going to remain short etc etc the good thing is that on the inside it's a wooden in structure yeah, and, and that allows for more flexibility that's how americans get to like redo their homes so easily because it's timber structures yeah, yeah in europe in spain especially like we have this like brick walls normally and then redoing walls can be a big issue but here we don't have that problem there are two columns in the cabana that are basically dividing the the length up in three thirds <laughs> that we have to hold on to but the rest is all up to grabs in our head already it's going to be completely different yeah we're going to reorganize everything yeah. Yeah. let's get to it let's start measuring so exciting so the first step to do any renovation is to measure up i am lucky to have this laser meter i borrowed it from a friend and it's super handy because with this you can measure up the long distances normally what i do when doing a measure up and i've done this a lot of times because i've renovated a lot of houses you haven't renovated a lot of houses i have renovated a lot of houses for work <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> for my work i've renovated a lot of houses yeah, yeah. and the important thing is to always make a lot of checkup measurements so if you do the long distances also make sure that you do the in-between distances so you can check if those measurements add up if you don't do that correctly you can really screw up you can assume that a house is perfectly square no never and most of the times it's not so people assume that they do one length measurement and leave it at that but you have to do multiple and compare to make sure that the house is equal on all sides yeah, it's something straight. like that no yeah so for yeah. example that wall you see behind us the one that is dividing the bedrooms is under a diagonal angle like it's not straight at all we only noticed that you noticed that actually yeah, like a week ago when like looking at the wall like it didn't make any sense and those things you don't see with a straight eye how do you say it? a clear eye when, when just looking at the house so for that it's very important to make measurements so what i normally do is first do all the long like the the wide measurements and then go more in depth in detail all the windows and doors need to be measured and i also always measure the position of the windows and doors because that is going to be super important when positioning the kitchen the bathroom and etc etc i also want to measure downstairs all the structure of the floor because i mentioned that the plumbing is a bit flexible and that's because there is a wooden beam floor in this house this gives me some flexibility in moving the plumbing to any other position but i need to have enough space for the fall to happen of the plumbing you get that did that make sense for someone who is not used to this you'll have to explain what the fall of the plumbing is later on ah, okay <laughs> if you have a plumbing pipe and that just goes horizontal at a certain point the water and 
whatever is in the water, the dirty water will stay and will get stuck eventually and plug the pipe. So you always let it fall under an angle and the minimum is one centimeter to 100 in most countries. So hard, 100 horizontal needs to have one centimeter vertical fall. There you go. No, that Did makes you know that? I didn't know that. Yeah, that's very important. So. Shall we start with then the length and the width of the house? We start with the length and the width, then we do the height and then slowly Poco a poco, we'll get it to By work. the way, measuring takes forever. Like you think, oh, it's gonna be easy. I'll do it in half an hour. No, it takes so long. So this is how the measurements are looking so far. It's just chaos. <laughs> chaos. And I'm very confused. <laughs> well, so you're doing really well. It looks like that, that meme thing where it's like, doo -doo 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 -doo, and there's numbers coming out. You know what I mean? Look at, look at the craziness. And Warner never likes how I measure, so he's gonna boss me around for a bit now. Well, it's, it's not true. <laughs> what does it say? It says you're right. <laughs> I'm already messing up and drawing all the measurements. So basically, I'm just standing around. <laughs> Warner's measure, measuring and he's taken away the notebook from me. Yes. No. He always like, that is sloppy. <laughs> you told me to put it on that side. How dare you? Yeah, I thought it was the other side and then you told me to put it there. No. Yes, you did. Put it on the wrong side. When, I get tired. I'm like, we have one left. Who cares? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> For me, putting it in a model, you really need to have those additional measurements to make sure that the house makes sense. Because the moment I start designing, I need to be confident that I can base myself on those measurements. I've been working on the model for quite a while now and it's looking really good. It's also super helpful. We already noticed some things we can really work with and we can really redesign. It shows us really well how the current state is and through this model we can really make some adjustments for the future and I'm having so much fun doing this. Yeah, it's so enjoyable for me to just dive into this model. I'm using a special program for this that I've been using a lot for my work but there are free programs you can use as well that are super helpful and I would highly recommend if you ever want to redesign your house to put your existing house and the situation as it is currently into a model because you can fly around and really see how things work by just taking your kitchen out for example or you're taking a wall out and see how that affects the space in your house and for us it's also a great tool to just have a base from where we can do quick sketches and like quick designs to see how certain changes and certain designs affect the house in general. While setting the model up, we noticed that the measurements didn't fully align, the measurements we made. So I had to just make some adjustments in the model and get it to a level that I'm comfortable working with. This model doesn't need to be extremely accurate because we're never gonna use it for technical drawings. We're never gonna use it for working drawings or interior design drawings. So we don't need to be super super detailed in what we show. It's really to help us envision the design of this place and help inform us what could be a good design strategy and what isn't. The windows were a hassle. Every window in this house turns out to be different and every window alcove is different here as well, both the height and the width of them. And now looking at the model as well, it becomes so apparent how small the windows are. So I think we're gonna just finalize this model, create some drawings out of it, move that into the iPad so we can draw over it. So let's get it finished. Wait. We're gonna talk all things design. Today we want to bring you with us as we go through our floor plan as it currently stands. Also draw out all the issues we see with, with how everything is laid out now and what our ideas are to improve the layout of. And we're putting our floor plans on the iPad so that we can see the existing layout and draw out some ideas that we have on top and share those ideas with you. We will also show you fly throughs of the model so you can visualize a bit better although you have seen the cabin tour I imagine if not you can also watch that to know what we're talking about yeah. and I will put also inspo pictures every time we're talking about something more aesthetic related to the design of of the renovations so that you can visualize what we're visualizing we won't have a final result of how it all looks I no, don't think we've just started but yeah, but at least we get to discuss some things. If you have any suggestions after watching this video, any thoughts come to mind with layout or with interesting ideas for us to incorporate, let us know because we're very happy to do that. Yeah, okay. any, any suggestions are welcome. So this is the floor plan of the whole house. This is the first floor and we have the floor below that as well. And that one is here. 
Planta Baja. We're going to talk about the first floor first and our ideas there because that's going to be the most important. This is the current floor plan of the house. This is the first floor. So the porch is right here. You have the kitchen here. This is the stairs and this is the entrance. And then this is the fireplace that defines basically the, that whole living area, bathroom, our bedroom with a really nice view through this window yeah. and the guest bedroom here. As it's currently set up, we have our living space here with two big garden furniture pieces because there was no sofa. If not, the sofa would go there. Then Warner has a temporary desk set up here to work. Mm -hmm. We also have a dining room table here that we barely ever use. And here we have a bit of a pantry space with the fridge as well. The main issues we see with this layout is first, let's start with the living space. The, the living room space does not feel comfortable at all. It's in a sort of hallway let's say from the door it has nothing in the back the back is very messy and the views are to the fireplace which makes sense it makes sense that the fireplace would be the center point but because the windows are not there you don't have any sort of nice view you're with your back to the nice view in the window in the back and it feels kind of it's floating in the middle of everything yeah. there's a lot of wasted space here there's a lot of wasted space here the entryway is also wasted space because there's nowhere to put things or anything so it's just a big corridor and this is also an awkward space between the door of the two bedrooms the doors of the two bedrooms and the door of the bathroom and the back of the sitting area yeah the um, kitchen is fine in theory obviously the the current kitchen doesn't work for us but it could be fine in theory the space is not really that bad but the dining room is also kind of floating in the middle which feels awkward and you always are walking around the chairs on the table and the desk is fine for now but we know that that's not where it will be eventually okay so another big issue with the current setup is that the wall of the guest bedroom is basically a bit of a diagonal yeah. we only noticed this like a week ago visually we hadn't realized but it's because of the window placement it was just necessary for them to put it like that yeah the window is here the column that is fixed is there the window is aligned with that column which doesn't allow for a wall to be run between the column and that window yeah. so that leads us to want to change this whole division because it makes no sense that it's on an incline and anyway we already wanted to do redo these walls because they're not very finished very well and they're not structural in, in any way they're no. made with plasterboard so it should be relatively easy to take them down and redo them and then another thing that we knew from the beginning we were gonna rethink completely was the bathroom because as you can tell it's a very very small space i mean we are using it it's fine but it's not comfortable it's very tight it's a very small shower right next to to the toilet right next to a small sink and it needs to be improved so that's all the things in the top floor that we know we want to rethink for yep. sure yep. so when we started thinking of redoing the space or decorating at first we were much less ambitious we just thought of doing cosmetic changes and accepting the layout as it was but the reality is that if we got a big nice couch and put it here it would still not make for a nice living room it would still feel like a corridor it would still have all this wasted space here and it would still have a very messy background and we just felt like that was not good enough also the views you're still missing out on all the nice views when we went on the rooftop we realized that maybe we had more possibilities because originally the fireplace really determined the layout if you couldn't move the fireplace there was not really much we could do but when we went to the rooftop we realized that there were two chimney outlets Shoot. pipes yeah. shoots <laughs> one for the fireplace here and then one for the kitchen over here and that is very interesting because that gives us way more possibilities right yes i mean we still need to work it out layout wise and and dimensions wise but we're almost 100 percent, 90 percent sure that the chimney that the fireplace is going to move over here and that would change the whole living space this would mean that we would put the sitting space here and mm -hmm. i'm imagining 
a nice, I don't know if that big, because I'm not very good with proportions. <laughs> That's very big. <laughs> a very nice, big L-shaped couch, which would then mean that if you're sitting here, you have nice views to the mountains in the background. <laughs> good, good mountains. <laughs> the fireplace is still the center of attention. Here we could put a love seat, and I'm gonna put some inspo images. I really want a love seat. This is like a goal of mine, to be able to lay and read. And it would make this whole sitting area super cozy and in a very nice part of the cabin. Yeah, what I always find important if I create homes is that you have to really create places. Zones. Zones for the different activities in your house. Having the living room where it is now creates basically a sitting area in between a circulation route, which is not handy, but positioning it where we think we want to have it really makes that a living space. Like it zones that area off and the column in the middle is actually going to help us. A good idea, Ali. I think the stairs for now i mean we might rethink this but the stairs for now stay where they are and the entrance for sure stays here so we'll have to find a way of making some sort of furniture piece here that helps us with the entryway needs so like hanging a clothes rack etc it could be nice to maybe create a room divider there yeah that is like half open and half closed yeah like a shelving system that goes up i've also been trying to find inspiration of what we can do with this back wall uh where the fire place will be because this fireplace is really big it's really big and it's meant to be built in yeah at the moment it's completely inside but exposed. it's exposed yeah it's, it's not exposed. a very pretty no it's not at all <laughs> but it's very bulky so we really have to think of a way of increasing it that is attractive there's of course the traditional way where you have a white like, casing yeah. yeah like a huge chimney but i was thinking of getting more creative with it i have some inspiration images but perhaps doing a bottom slab where the fireplace is on top the fire place is encased in a cool material i saw one which was like an oxidized well, metal yeah. so it looked really cool and then in the slab you can do a sitting element if you feel like there is not enough yeah. sitting space and then above do shelving but not the width because the width of the fireplace is really really big if you make shelving that would be an awkward shelf so then you can make shelving that is much thinner in the background and oh. then make that whole wall perhaps one color because even though we're going to leave the exposed stone walls in most places there because they put the kitchen and they've tiled the kitchen I think the rock when we take out the tile is gonna be very messy it's gonna be filled with cement and it's also handy maybe to have some places to store wood in because it's better for yeah, the wood to underneath, be warm yeah. underneath the slab huh, like, like that's what I had thought then we have to take into account the bedroom the bedroom placement we're gonna keep the same but we'll probably straighten the walls no yep. that's the idea yeah the column doesn't need to be where Ex Exposed. Like so we can just move it to a spot yeah. that we find usable. And we could because right now the main bedroom is a bit smaller than the guest bedroom. We could shift it a bit if we saw. No, because then the, the column would be exposed. The column will be exposed now always. Okay, anyway, we could perhaps contemplate that, but that's not really relevant. The one big question we have is where will the bathroom go? Because if this till here, this whole square is living, if we leave the bathroom where it is, it cannot be made bigger yeah. because of the window limitation here. So that will mean that it's a very narrow and unusable space as it is currently. There is the option we have thought about of dividing the bathroom in two parts and then having toilet and sink and then a nice Nice big shower here with perhaps a vanity as well. This would mean that the bathroom, one part of the bathroom stays as it is and the other part would go to the other side. The bathroom is also never going to have a window so we're going to have to be, get creative with making it nice. Another thing I had thought of was moving the bathroom completely to this side mm -hmm. and making it therefore bigger. How do you feel about that? Is that possible with our current pipe system? We'll have to see where we can get the plumbing. But as the floor structure is now, we can get the plumbing, true. But depending on if we change the floor structure, we'll need to see if it then has to go through the lower floor, so the concrete floor. If we put the bathroom here, we would have to think, because originally we had thought that the kitchen would go here. Mm -hmm. A nice long kitchen with perhaps an island. 
but I don't know how why that works and how that would go with a pole. We have a very limited space. So normally a kitchen has a 1100 mil to 1200 mil corridor and then this is 650 mil, so 65 centimeters. And then this you normally want to have minimum 80 centimeters, so 800 mil. What if it goes till the, till the column? That could be that you integrate it into the column. Then the danger of that is that the, the kitchen becomes a corridor space. The problem with this is, is that the living room then becomes a corridor, corridor space. space again. Then yeah. it would make more sense. It's the bathroom. The bathroom just ruins everything. Is it a solution for us to just have one bedroom? Are we focusing too much on having two bedrooms? What's the what's the benefit for us to have two bedrooms on the upper floor? Just thinking out loud. Yeah, I haven't thought of that at all. Um, I mean, if we have two bedrooms on the top floor, it allows us in the future when we have thought we would go traveling or do our things to rent out the top floor and leave the downstairs floor with our things and storage. Mm -hmm. Like we could have our own space to put our things and then we could rent out a whole floor of a very decent house. And what about, we're just going to think out loud because this is something we actually haven't drawn out. Fully this figured the, out. This no. is the first time we're looking at this. Of course, we're stuck with this column here and we're stuck with this column there. That's the structure we cannot really change. Is it a solution to work with the bathroom here, for example? Is that solving anything? If we have a door here, we have a door there, how does that work? Yeah, but that's a really ugly space here. Yeah, but this could be a bigger, bigger closet where you have all your pantry and then this is your open kitchen layout because then we don't have to have high stuff here your fridge can be here for example and all your things can be tucked away here we can do the same thing that there is storage here and then there is the door the nice thing of having the door there is that it's close to the window if you come in we don't have issues with any closets that we're hitting and here the bed can be like this Mm, is that something I you haven't thought of that at all. You haven't thought of that at all? No, I had only thought of dividing the bathroom between both sides or putting it in the opposite side. Because here, this would be, yeah, living. Then this is kitchen, this area here. Yeah. And then the rest would be dining room. Yeah, which we don't need a big space for. No, we need a small dining room space is that a good position for the dining because now it still doesn't have <coughs> full access to that view this is this is a very difficult angle but when you are dining you don't need an, a view no because you're talking to each other you need it when you're like laying on the couch chilling mm -hmm. if the kitchen was like this and had an element of island mm -hmm. maybe you could do an integrated sitting space so that the dining is not floating in the middle of nowhere. Another option could be is that what you just said, having it not float into space, maybe having the kitchen island here and like making it part of this whole unit so that when you go to the living, you have to go all the way here, which protects this living area more from the outside door. You feel like you're less in a corridor space. The kitchen then becomes a very central point in the house. So we do have to really think about that. It also becomes a corridor corridor. Yeah, it becomes a corridor, but I have less issues with the kitchen having that because it is already a place where you're constantly moving around. But if you're cooking, you don't want to have this constant movement through here. The nice thing of it though, is that it allows for this wall to be opened here. <laughs> Our drawing skills are not great. No, that's fine. <laughs> and that creates the possibility of having a really nice furniture piece yeah. that is central in your space. And that basically blocks everything off that happens behind Behind there. them, yeah. Do we make this living space too small? by putting the bathroom in the middle because you lose the corridor on each side so yeah. if effectively you're making the living room space how many meters not not very wide like no. it's a very small square but i don't have a problem with having that space small as long as i don't have circulation space in it if we can take all yeah, the circulation space out it's all fine the problem with this route you can see already if you put anything dining related you get a lot of conflicts with yeah walking so that's that's definitely not a solution does it work if the the kitchen would be here and it would be facing that direction do yeah. we win anything by doing that i was thinking more if we did the bathroom here could we make this the kitchen the issue here is this space would this be a dining space it's very strange to come through the door and immediately see a table mm -hmm. but if you do like an integrated sitting this space would be a bit awkward for us the dining is the least important 
important area. What is very important is that the kitchen works really well mm -hmm. and that the living room is very cozy and that we have a nice bathroom. It would be nice to have a table for when we have dinners, but it doesn't have to be what the design is, is revolving around. I mean, you're in the middle of the countryside. The opportunities you have for 12 people to sit around a table are far and few in between. <laughs> Maybe lots of you move to this area and we become friends and then suddenly we will be missing the big dining table. But right now, it's not really necessary. But maybe this, this wouldn't be bad, the kitchen here. Because that would allow for this not to be an obstructed space. Like this would be living. And this would still be a not very obstructed space. But it would be a cozy corner again with a window. Okay, we're gonna have to cut it short here because we need to get some wood delivered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the basis we can work with is that we have the living area. Uh, Figured out. We have this bedroom and this bedroom done. Mm -hmm. And then this is basically the zone that, that still needs, needs to, to be work. thought out. Good job. Thank so, you. We have a lot to figure out. But it's exciting. Yeah. It looks good. I think it could work really well. And I'm very excited about this spot. Yeah, the sitting there like looking Like looking out. at the fire and the view at the same time. That would be great. It's going to be amazing. And the bedrooms are good because I like where they are. I like how they, they work, yeah. how they function. So it's just everything else that we need to... Yeah, the bedrooms are uh, if it ain't fixed. Uh, no, no, if, if it's, it's not broken. If not broken, don't fix it. Yeah, something like something that. Like that. <laughs> yeah. that big L area here is something we really need to do something with. Cool. Cool. Let's go get some wood. Two days have passed and we have been working on some modeling. I'm going to show Ali for the first time. She hasn't seen it. So we're going to just fly around the options we have and the ideas we've generated. We have four different concepts and we're going to look at all the advantages and disadvantages of all of them and see what we think and how we are going to move forward after this. So, so option one. The living room stays the same in all options. Yeah, that's like, a, that's a very nice it. setup. The stair is here. Then the kitchen is here. It has an island here, dining, and the two bedrooms. And then the bathroom has been broken up in two. So yeah. there's the shower area and the toilet area. This is how it looks like. We're just going to fly into the house. So you come directly into the kitchen. Yeah, kitchen is there, the island is there, and then that you have the curved wall in the back. Oh, that's creative. That's cool. It looks cool, no? Yeah, I like yeah. it. And then this in the back can really be a feature wall. So I imagine that there will be some built-in shelving here. Yeah. And yeah, we can do all kinds of funky stuff with that area. Dining area is very well situated. That's true. Yeah, it has like a very comfortable space in the house. What are your thoughts? My initial thought is that it feels like you very directly jump into the living space. Like there's no entrance in a way. Mm -hmm. And coming into the kitchen can be a bit strange but i understand that this is i mean we have limited space i don't have a love seat <laughs> no the love seat is out the <laughs> but that's fine you get a beautiful um, big couch so i think the living room area i really like i'm really yeah. happy with that decision that we made and i like that there is a proper dining space that doesn't feel like it's in the way it, it's a designated space yeah. i think the feature back wall this wall you see here could be really cool with a shelving system and i like that curve and i it feels like there's a proper division from the bedroom. I don't know if that's good or not, but it could. it is an interesting concept. I find it important that you're not immediately from the bathroom going into, into the, the living area and the same with the yeah, bedroom. Yeah, specifically so the kitchen. You don't want yeah. to go directly in. Yeah, no. it gives more privacy. And the good thing of this as well, having the bathroom divided is that if you have guests, you can have two functions going on at the same time. Yeah. So that's really cool. Yeah. Okay. Problem with the window, of course. Yeah. But we know that already. That's something yeah, the we'll windows are very later. low. Yeah, we'll know. resolve that later. And the island that could be reconsidered, maybe we could do an L kitchen with a back wall. Yeah, so the idea could be that instead of having the island here, that you just run the kitchen and then have a high shelving system here that has the fridge and the, the oven. I had already envisioned having the fridge here built in, but of yeah. course you can bring that forward and take this one out. So it really becomes an L shape in that corner. That would work really well as well. I'm happy with that. Okay, cool. Let's see option two. Okay, option two. Ah, yeah, this is the one that you completely came up with. I had not thought about this at all. The kitchen is here in the middle, yeah. facing the living room. There's a high shelving system here that goes on into a built-in seat in this corner. Yeah. The bathroom is here. It creates some buffer between this bedroom. You can have some storage here. You can have a closet or something. This room is very small and doesn't have a storage, so that doesn't work very well. Yeah, which is a shame because that's our bedroom, the one we like. <laughs> so in 3D it looks like this. Okay. 
Yeah, you come into the dining. Yeah, you come in in the dining. You have the living with your love seat, and the kitchen is facing this area. You can decide to to fill this in because now it goes like it's open till the till the ceiling. Yeah. But you can also just level that out so there's like a ceiling in here that just follows the line of the top of the doors. Okay, and the fridge would come here to the left. Yeah, there's a fridge, pantry, oven, everything can be stuffed in there. Everything is tucked away. So you don't have a big island, but since you have a lot of storage next to it, you should be fine. Thoughts? I mean, the, the bedroom is a bit of a bummer. The fact that you don't have storage or anything in that bedroom, which is the one we want to sleep in. It's fine if it's for guests, but if it's for us, then yeah, you're missing that element. If we move to the other side, then the entrance of the bathroom is less handy for us. And there's always one person that has to go around the kitchen to go to yeah. the bathroom. I also have a big problem with this, with the amount of corridor space that is there. Yeah. We lose a lot of space in the corridors here. Here it's less of a problem because it's a functional area but here it's not when i initially drew it out i thought we could have another storage here but, but it you, doesn't fit you can already see that the bathroom is not big enough for us and what i like of this is that we could have one of those really cool i don't know what they're called those little breakfast bar is it called a breakfast bar yeah where you have all yeah. your pantry space tucked away or all your electrodomestics and stuff that yeah. you open the doors and you have it's like right a there. work yeah. counter i thought walking into the dining space was going to be weird but somehow the walking in to this one feels better the entrance it feels like you're walking into a living space but that makes sense you want to see it from the other side <laughs> whenever we see it like this i realize how small the space is yeah it's a very small space i put this massive column in but there was just an idea of having a shelving system so yeah yeah, not... yeah i understand i love the, the the sitting area that that i'm really convinced by it's not bad it's not as bad as i thought it would be yeah, except for the fact that we lose a lot of space. Yeah. yeah. Next. Okay, number three. Oh, this wow, you went rogue here. <laughs> yeah, this was just in the idea of checking if we can have the bedroom having the same view as we have. Just okay. trying that out because that view is spectacular. And especially during the night, uh, yeah, during it's, the night nice. it's, it's really nice to, to look from there. But of course, that has a lot of consequences for the, the rest of the layout. The seat is still here, the dining seat, and then the kitchen is here. There's a kitchen bench here and then high cupboards here. Mm -hmm. And then the bathroom can be pushed in that direction. In 3D, that looks like this. So the living area, dining, mm -hmm. kitchen, and then yeah, you see the two bedrooms there, and then that's the door of the bathroom. Okay. What do you think? It feels like the kitchen is tucked in a corridor. It feels like you didn't have space and you just tucked it there. And you kind of lose the perspective of it being a cabin when you walk in, because it's too tight. You really only see it from a very small angle. If you walk in at all, then you lose that perspective. Yeah, the beauty of this cabana is that typology, that uh, gable roof typology with the beams. And you want to have that exposed as much as possible and in a proper rectangle, like mm. more like a square rectangle than what we have now. Yeah, I feel like the, the bedrooms in this one are the, the become like the main part and the yeah. bathroom, I'm sure, is very comfortable and big. So but then every, like the kitchen, I don't like. I don't like the kitchen either. I do like the bathroom set out having a bigger vanity. So yeah. we have a bit more storage space. I think that will be important for the future for us. So that's nice. Bedroom is nice, but you still don't have the same view as you have from here. No, but that's fine so i think we can discard this it one. feels like a dorm yeah a little bit yeah, yeah. i don't know like why. a hotel like motel dorm, kind of situation yeah. okay. next last option okay last option are you ready so this is a design we have discussed the idea is to move the bathroom to the other side and make it bigger yeah. and then have the kitchen in the other area the sitting area is still at the front the dining area yeah sorry and then the living is still here and then the bedrooms are here this is a cupboard system i created a bit based on the one we showed in concept one and the idea is to create that buffer between the bedroom and the kitchen so you're not immediately in the walking bedroom. in the kitchen yeah. it also allows us to put the fridge away or the fridge can be here and then here can be pantry space or the oven on a higher position so it's not underneath the cooktop but it's a bit higher up we can also make this a feature wall with like open shelving it's so funny because when you draw it out it's completely different but because you don't have the proportions right so 
<laughs> I have drawn the L in the opposite direction. <laughs> There's another curve wall. That's a cool curve wall. Yeah, I think we should try to do something with curve walls because I think that would work here in this cabana. Okay. Yeah, so we have the, the bathroom in there and then here's that feature wall that I mentioned mm -hmm. with the two openings to the bedroom and then the kitchen. This can be high storage and then the lower storage and then the fridge or the fridge here and then there's other storage there, pantry storage. There's more options. What do you think? It's interesting. Somehow the kitchen layout is a bit strange for me because I, you have your couch to the sink. I like and the window is an issue. The window is definitely an issue. I think we can resolve that with this one as well. I have some ideas around that. What we can create with the kitchen is a proper backbench for the couch. So you can design the couch in a bit of a different way. Can we turn the other way to see? Is the couch to back? Can that we move a bit? No. Well, the couch can bit. we go move to the left or to the right. I have yeah, now positioned more. it in such a way that it's not too far from the fireplace because you don't want to get too far away because no, if I not it's useless. No, put it useless. closer, I think. Yeah, but with this one I put it more back. So we can make the kitchen actually bigger, but I held on to a 1200 mil corridor space because the kitchen doesn't need to be bigger. It's already big enough in this way. Can I see the bathroom? So there's a toilet, a vanity, and then the shower is here. Keep in mind that, of course, that there's a glass panel here. But this bathroom is nice. I think this curved shower will be very pretty. If we have like a lime texture on that wall, it's going to mm. be very nice. It's a decent bathroom. That's, that's good. That's comfortable. And it's comfortable with the bedroom. So that is nice. Yeah. This is what I was thinking of uh, having a lower cedar here and then having hanging storage here that's just maybe exposed even. Having shelving and a hanging exposed so that it doesn't really clog up that whole space because okay. this window is right there because if you come with a suitcase you can just yeah, put, put it, it in on here top. this is what we talked about guests don't need proper yeah. closets i think this we can work with this it, it needs to be worked out much more but this is interesting any other thoughts no i think i need to i need to wrap my head <laughs> around it to. first Okay, so just to wrap up, what are your thoughts? Do you have a preference? I think I like option number one or four yeah. the best, but both of them have kinks that need to be worked out. And we can integrate things from number two and number three in number one and number four. Yeah, what this confirms is that I really like the living space. I think it's very cozy. It's actually even maybe too big. We can make it smaller and we have options. It's a small cabin, but it is nice. Yeah, I think what we now need to work on is getting the composition right. Right? Mm -hmm. and getting the storage right, getting cupboards in and stuff, and making sure that if we start putting volume in, that it still feels spacious. I think that balance is going to be very yeah. important because you see that when you put a volume in, like that kitchen island, all of a sudden it feels very it feels clunky. Yeah. I think that balance is going to be super important. But we're going to just work on this for the upcoming weeks. For now, it's just thinking about it. Getting more inspiration of ideas of how the interior could work, and we'll slowly work it out. If you have any suggestions, or ideas mm -hmm. or any thoughts on this please let us know in the comments let yeah you us might know. think of something completely different yeah this is just a first try we have mm -hmm. done this within a couple of days this yeah. whole exercise so we haven't really wrapped our head around it ourselves and i think you could come up with really good ideas also let us know what your favorites are because i'm really curious yeah option one two three or four let's yeah. just call them that this is exciting good design takes really long yeah. so this is just the beginning but it's nice to have the model and to be able to look at the space and to visualize it in a more realistic manner. I notice that I'm really bad with proportions. <laughs> when you put it in, I'm like, oh, it doesn't fit where I thought it would fit at all. <laughs> I think the struggle we have with this cabana, it's not so much that it's very small, and it's the, the windows. Which is what you see with the current design as well, that they based they, it they around the windows yeah. and yeah. it is a bit awkward at times. But we're going to work on this. And if you like this video also, let us know because we have way more space that we could redesign with you. There's a whole bottom floor, there's the studio space, also our own cabanas in the future. So yeah. if you like this type of thinking process, let us know so that we take it into account. Do we continue? Yeah, ciao!